This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter based in Brooklyn, New York. Her name is Melissa Jones. Miss Jones, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Great. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. Now, you have a, uh, we're catching you right before your, um, your latest single is about to be released. Yeah. Um, and it's called Without You. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe at the time of taping, um, it's uh, May 21st. So we're about 10 days away from that. But we wanted to get you in and talk about it for a little bit. Uh, We're going to talk about that as well as some of your other releases and some of your music. Uh, But before we do that, as always, for those who don't know Melissa Jones, tell us about Melissa Jones. Well, um, I'm originally from Oakland, California. Um, I've been living in Brooklyn for about nine months now. So um, I made that move during the pandemic. It's been it's been an interesting move, but um, I'm really excited to be here. I have definitely grown um, as a singer, performer, as an artist. Um, I'm collaborating with a really amazing producer, Eric Lewis, and both of us are just kind of vibing and, and creating music. And I've, I've, I feel like the music that I'm creating now is just really exciting. It's definitely really innovating. And um, I'm just excited for new stuff um, and pushing my artistry and, and being super creative. Um, I'm also a poet as well. So that's really um, helped my my writing and my songwriting a lot um i went to school for creative writing so it's it's definitely lends itself a just a very like unique perspective on a lot of the songs that i write very lyrical and melodical um and i've i've published two books as well (laughs) so there's a lot you know being a singer being a performer being an author um just i have my hands and different pots and i'm just really excited to just grow okay great um now let's back up a little bit you said you're originally from oakland yes um did you grow up in a uh, musical household or in the church or how did you well my my parents played a lot of music in the house um my father he was and still is a big fan of like surround sound speakers and um, very high tech with that. And so it always felt like a concert in our house every evening. My mom would sing. Um, my mom owned a lot of really like awesome soul vinyl, um, everything from Michael Jackson, Off the Wall, Thriller, um, Prince, um, The Beatles, Duran Duran. So I was really exposed to, you know, um, different genres of music at a very young age. And that really like inspired me to blend a little bit of soul with um, rock elements with blues. And it's just, that's where the inspiration comes from. It's just music was always played and everybody danced and sang in the living room. So. Okay. Do you have uh, do you have siblings? I do. Yes. I do have an older sister and my younger brother. Okay. Are they in the uh, music business too or no? No, not at all. (laughs) My sister's a big music fan. She definitely collects a lot of vinyl as well. She's a a fan of the Beach Boys. Um, So very retro-y, retro hairstyles and and clothes. So that definitely carried on for sure. But I'm the only like singer, musician. (laughs) 
when did you uh when did you know that you wanted to uh to be a singer <laughs> at a young age um i don't know how how old i was maybe three or four but i would just sit at the tv and watch mtv with my sister um and that was MTV was awesome back then and you know, music videos. Um, and so it was just really cool. Um, I knew all the lyrics to Madonna's Like a Prayer when I was four. So that was interesting. <laughs> um, so yeah, just watching all the music videos and then just being in a household that played music all the time. I knew that I wanted to do it. Okay. Who were, um, who were some of your uh, influences? Um, you mentioned you, you listened to Madonna at four. Uh, <laughs> who are some of your other influences or people you uh, looked up to? Um, definitely number one is Prince. Um, I really loved how just creative and innovative he was. Um, being super talented and playing every instrument and just kind of standing out. And like, I really love that about him. His music was really dope. Um, I love James Brown. <laughs> I love that true soul element. Um, definitely Stevie Wonder. Um, Sam Cooke is definitely one of my favorites. I loved his voice, very smooth. Um, just a lot of like oldies, like soul music, Delphonic, stylistics. Um, being from Oakland, I love Tower, Tower of Power, um, Confunction, just a lot of funk, soul. Um, and then, you know, gradually into neo soul music. That's what I'm heavily inspired by. Erica Badu, Jill Scott, D'Angelo, et cetera. Okay. Um, now, you're from Oakland, but you moved to uh, Brooklyn, New York about nine months ago. Why, why the move to uh, Brooklyn? Um, I feel like I wanted to change. I felt, um, I love Oakland. Oakland is beautiful. I just wanted to be, um, surrounded and closer to, um, just the happenings of New York, even though it's a pandemic, there's still things that are happening. Um, I feel like I am being pushed here musically and artistically. Um, I am growing a lot and I'm learning a lot and just, a different caliber of musicianship here, um, the pace. Um, I needed a, you know, a change of scenery and definitely um, the pace actually makes me a little bit more, um, I guess, motivated um, to get things done and um, be precise about what I'm doing. I think in Oakland, I was kind of, you know, I was doing, I was, you know, focused, but still I, I felt like I needed like an extra edge um, to kind of push myself a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, I, um, I don't know if I, I didn't tell you this, but I'm from Vallejo. So I kind of know how that Oakland vibe kind of works. And that leads me to this question. Do you find that um, Oakland um, and Brooklyn are closely related music wise? Because Oakland is very soulful. It mm -hmm. always has been. Yes. And um, I'm picturing Brooklyn or New York, uh, not necessarily Brooklyn, but New York kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. It definitely has a lot of similarities in, in terms of like the soulful. I think in terms of being in New York, I feel like there's a lot of jazz heads here and it's very, uh, got that jazz. And then Oakland is like, got that funk so it's like it's 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 cool to just have those elements and be surrounded by that I, I definitely I definitely see a lot of similarities though and it's really um it really made me feel like the transition was a little bit easier in terms of like the musicality and the soulfulness that it they both have so that was pleasant Okay. Um, so you have a new single coming out, like we mentioned, um, May 21st, mm -hmm. uh, without you tell us about, um, that upcoming single. So without you is a song about love and it's, it's just talking about like, I don't know what I do without you, you know, and it's kind of comparing, um, images of like, 
nature, birds, um, different environmental surroundings. And I, I kind of picture like, what would we do without all of these beautiful things that when we look outside the window and we see like, what would we do without these things? So it was kind of like using the metaphor of like the beauty in our surroundings and comparing that to someone special in our lives and, you know, not knowing what to do without them. Okay. And is that, is that a song that you wrote or um, produced? Um, How did that work? How did the arrangement go? It is a song that I wrote. Um, Eric Lewis is the producer on the track um and l she is the one that she did um strings on the track so it was cello um but he basically um came up with a drum pattern and laid bass on it and did some synths and i wrote the song and then the cello and the strings came after Okay. Um, yeah, you sent me an advanced copy of the song. I loved it. It has um, that R&B feel, but also I hear a lot of jazz in there too. Mm-hmm. Um, and you did, I think you mentioned that you love jazz, but you kind of like pop, jazz, R&B. So kind of the whole, the whole thing. Does your music reflect um, many different genres? I know this one sort of sounds like soul and jazz, but what about some of your other, well, you have one other release, I believe. Yeah. So I released um, uh, my first single off the untitled project. I still don't have a name yet, but I released it in February on Valentine's day. And that one's called make it last. And that one is definitely um, soul funk driven. It's a little bit more upbeat um, in their arrangement. Okay. And is that another, um, another song that you produced yourself? I did. I, I co-produced it. Um, again, Eric Lewis, he's the one that is laying down the foundation. I came up with um, a lot of the vocal arrangement and the ideas, melodic ideas. And then he, he takes my ideas and then adds to it. And that's how we typically work. Okay. Let me back up a little bit. You said that um, you moved to Brooklyn about nine months ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Right in the heart of this uh, pandemic that we're on. Hopefully, knock on wood, it's a on the tail end of that. Um, did that, how did that play a role in, or did it play a role in the release of uh, new music? Has it been delayed at all, or did you push it back, or? Um, I actually started, I was creating um, a lot of this music before the pandemic hit, and then once it did, um, I got more creative and um, Eric and I were sending music and stuff back and forth. And I had so many different like templates and ideas that I was sent to him and he would choose which one kind of like grabbed his attention and we would work from there. And he was getting more creative too and creating things and send me stuff and I would lay down ideas. So. I feel like a majority of the, you know, the foundation and a lot of the songwriting and stuff happened right in the beginning. And then when I got here, it was a few more, you know, ideas that were coming and then just kind of recording and made it easier to be in the same space to, to work. Okay. Well, I, uh, I love both of your songs and hopefully the 21st people will get a chance to hear the new one. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. BGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Um, now, you mentioned earlier that um, that you have an album coming out um, mm-hmm. that's not titled yet. Mm-hmm. Um, how close is that to being completed? Super close. Um, 
I'm pretty much, so there's going to be eight songs. And so the release of two singles, so we know two are out the way. Um, I think I'm pretty much maybe 75% done. There needs to be like mixing and mastering on songs. There's one song that needs more work than the other ones that we need to fully record, but we're almost, almost there. Okay. Um, is there a, um, overall theme? Where are you taking us with this, this Hmm. debut, debut album? Um, there is a combination of different themes. Um, I think love being one of them. Um, I think independence and, um, I think sexuality, I think a little bit of sassiness too. I think it just kind of showcases the the different sides of Melissa Jones in a different light. So it's more serious tone with love, playfulness, um, soulful, sultry, um, a lot of those elements. And so I'm just really excited to kind of showcase those different sides. Okay. Are you a, uh, are you an independent artist or are you signed to a label? I am an independent artist. Yes. Um, And Eric, the producer that I'm working with has um, an independent label called X5 Records. And so um, he is, you know, launching that and trying to work with other artists. Um, So I am pretty much the first artist that's representing X5 Records. Okay. Um, now, uh, make it last has been out for a couple months now. Um, Mm -hmm. how has the, um, how's it been received by your fans and the general public? Um, a lot of people love the song. Um, I, you know, I used to be in a band called No Lovely Thing before doing my own solo stuff. So, um, a lot of people were really, um, receptive and excited that I was releasing music as an, you know, a solo artist. Um, and, you know, I, I've been attending a few, few jams here um, in Brooklyn and, you know, there's a DJ that sometimes spins it and plays it and like people get excited about it. And, and that's really awesome. I really, um, really love the feedback really love like when people are playing the music or telling me like yeah I played your song the other day or you know I can't get it out my head and I'm like that's good (laughs) so it's been good okay now you mentioned uh that you were uh part of a band was the was the goal always to um well was the goal to always do like a solo project or um um I think so. I think like I I just wanted to I I wanted to play with live musicians. I wanted to be around musicians. Um, I've always just been a fan of just the live element. And there have been there was a time where I had a lot of music and I didn't have any musicians and I just kind of landed landed in a band um, and by accident, really, (laughs) I was just looking for um, a a couple of musicians to kind of translate my music. And then the guitarist I met said that his singer quit and was like, do you want to join the band? I'm like, sure. So I ended up joining and ended up being a totally different sound because they started off kind of like a psychedelic kind of soul rock vibe. And I kind of just shifted a little bit but still had some elements of the rock but it was more neo soul jazz but it was it was an interesting blend of music and it 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 pushed me and I definitely am very grateful that I was a part of it and just wanting to like transition and be here had to depart from the band and kind of start over and which which is exciting I definitely feel like being in a band and having that experience taught me a lot. And I'm just really excited 
to work with the different musicians here. Okay. Let me, uh, let me back up just a little bit. Um, Melissa, um, being from the Bay, did you do a lot of singing around the Bay area before you moved to, um, to Brooklyn or were you part of a band there too, or? Yeah, I was, I was still in no lovely thing. I was in no lovely thing started in like 2015. So I definitely was, um, performing at different, um, venues in San Francisco. Um, we played for the independent once, um, a couple of like local festivals like Juneteenth, uh, Malcolm X. Um, yeah, just a few, you know, the, the Legionnaire, um, just a few like local venues, um, in the area we would book gigs. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question and you may not know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Um, now that you're settled in New York, Brooklyn, do you ever foresee yourself moving back to the Bay area? Oh, (laughs) I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go next month for, for about two and a half weeks just to visit. And I haven't seen my family in a long time. Um, so I'm really excited about that, but I, I don't know if, I don't know. Okay. Well, I told you, you may not be able to answer it right now. So <laughs> right. what are your, what do your, what do your family think of, what did your family think about you when you say, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm moving to New York. Um, they were pretty supportive. Um, you know, uh, I had like a little going away social distance kind of vibe at, at Lake Merritt friends and family came through and were really, you know, really supportive. And I'm really appreciative of that support. Okay. I've been thinking about moving since, I don't know, like the year prior. So Mm. when I was here, so it was like, oh, I definitely want to move. Definitely want to come back. It's just exciting place to be. Very overwhelming, but exciting. (laughs) So... I, I, I was really inspired and just want, want to be surrounded by all of the happenings and learn, you know. Okay. Um, so with this new um, album um, scheduled for September, um, what do you hope people get out of your music, Melissa? Mm. I hope that they leave away walking knowing that, um, you know, this is, this is a project that had, that has come from, you know, a lot, a lot of like, a lot of pain, a lot of overcoming challenges. Um, I lost my mom in, um, in June, but I didn't find out until November. So it was like a six month or, however long process um, finding out that news. And I think I just want people to know that I've always like been inspired to um, do music and it's coming from a place of like, I, I'm thinking about my mom, always thinking about um, celebrating womanhood, thinking about celebrating black people, um, the black experience. And I just, you know, want people to know that that's where that comes from. My purpose is to celebrate us and to make us feel good, you know? And so this is like an, a project that is about celebrating identity and purpose and the beauty behind that with a lot of soul and with so many different elements of um, jazz and just, I want my music to, to leave an imprint and to be, you know, it's just to create like something that's really beautiful and timeless. And that is just, that's always been the purpose. Okay. Let me back up just a little bit. And first of all, mm-hmm. sorry for your loss. Um, you, you mentioned that you write poetry and you also do some creative writing. Um, mm-hmm. Do you foresee yourself or have you put out a book of poetry or um, as a way of expressing yourself? 
Yes, I I wrote two books. Um, one is called Pineapple Grenades, published back in 2013, I believe. And then the other one is Black Girl Mango Seeds. I think that was 2017 or 18. I can't remember, but I they're both independent um, publishing. Um, I use Amazon Publishing um, to kind of guide me a bit, but I'm, I'm definitely thinking about um, working on a third book. Like I, I love, I love writing poetry. Poetry is a big part of my artistry, my work, um, and I definitely want to figure out a way to combine music and have like a maybe like a half music half poetry release one day but i'm really want to blend those those two together definitely okay well you sound definitely like a very um uh talented uh driven person um <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Melissa, tell people where they can reach out to you on uh, social media. They can reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Melissa Jones Music. And you can find me on all streaming and digital platforms. Melissa Jones on Spotify, Apple Music, um, all of the digital platforms (laughs) that's out there. Okay. And uh, quickly, um, have you done the the Facebook Live and Instagram Live and stuff like that? I have, yeah, several times, definitely. And what's that experience like for you? Um, I definitely, I have done. I used to do like a IG Live like every Friday or Sunday, just to kind of put on like a little. A little show and the response has always been really good um i like I, sometimes i just don't even plan it i just kind of get on whenever i'm feeling the need to and, and most of it is freestyle so it's kind of like a freestyle soul session kind of vibe where i'll just play some soulful instrumental music and just sing and sing whatever's on my heart and yeah, people would tune in and it would be a great experience. I definitely need to bring that back. So <laughs> I haven't done those in a while. I've been so focused on trying to get music done and create this beautiful album. So okay. definitely gotta bring that back. <laughs> All right. Well, Melissa, anything else you want to add before we uh, before we let you get back to your evening? Uh... Well, I just hope that, you know, everybody checks out the new music and continue to support um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited. Um, also, yes, this is important. Um, along with the new single without you, I'm going to be releasing a music video the same day. So you'll have a visual for the song as, as well. So that's really exciting. Okay. And the, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. So the video was already completed or the video is already completed and it'll be released on the same day as the, the song. Okay. And is that going to be on YouTube or? Where's That's that going to be premiered on YouTube. Okay. So you have your own YouTube channel too, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. And what's the name of your channel? It's Melissa Jones. Melissa Jones. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have all Melissa's information on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com and also in the show notes if you're um, listening to this on our podcast, the audio podcast, or also on YouTube. Um, anything else you want to add, Melissa? This has been a great interview. It has been. No, that's that's it for me. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show today. I think I gave you like one day notice. (laughs) So (laughs) appreciate you uh, making some time Um, and keep us posted on what's going on with you. Um, Don't forget to look out for the new single um, without you uh, May 21st. And then do we have a date in September or it's still kind of fluid or Um, I am going for the last September I'm looking at my calendar because I just just told somebody this the other day so yes September 24th so the last Friday of September September 24th that okay. is going to be the plan to release the album all right and so we'll post that information um on our website as well when it gets closer to September 24th hopefully you have a name by then yes <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, Melissa. <clears throat> excuse me, Melissa Jones. I appreciate you uh, taking the time today. Well, let me ask you a question before you go. Okay. Um, what do you What do you miss about the Bay Area? Like I said, I'm from the Bay Area as well. Um, what do you miss about the Bay Area? Oh, man. <laughs> Hate to put I'm- you on the spot, but. No, it's fine because I I remember I think about this all the time. Mexican food for sure. Um, definitely hiking. Um, nature, just all nature. <laughs> okay. Hiking for sure. So they don't have burrito trucks in Brooklyn. They do, but it's not like the same. It doesn't taste the same. <laughs> all right, I'm just glad to know that they have. I was just messing around. <laughs> all right, Melissa Jones, appreciate you. Uh, keep us posted on what's going on and we'll look for um, without you uh, May 21st and also the upcoming album in September. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. And that's Melissa Jones on the bring back soul music podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now you've been listening to the bring back soul music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. That's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Melissa Jones. You can find out more about Melissa on her website at melissajones.bangoogle.com. Also, you can find out more about Melissa on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget to check out all our merch at The Soul Shop at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.